WTVJ News presents a special report on the destruction caused by Hurricane Donna. Ordeal in the Keys. Good evening, this is Rara Frenick with a special report on the destruction caused in the Florida Keys by Hurricane Donna. WTVJ newsman Dick Dale and Al Dempsey were on the island where Marathon is located when Donna hit. And this program tonight will be made up of their film report just received. In the film was this script with some notes, which was never meant to be used as a news script, but it briefly and dramatically sets the stage for this news film report on ordeal of the keys. I'll quote from it for just a moment. Dale says, we are forced to evacuate in the height of the storm, first to a boat over 100 yards away that had a light going on it. I will never know how that light got lit, but I know that I was praying real loud and hard. The boat held us for an hour and a half and went over. We went over, too. We broke into a building to catch our breath and then into another one where we spent the night. Dempsey had only a shirt and a pair of swim trunks, I had shorts and a woman's coat I found in the house. This was the closest I have ever come to death, and I was glad I was with Al. Not too much panic, and we got along fine. We were actually walking in an area that had enough debris to kill ten men, yet we didn't get hit with anything. Lots of good film. And now we'll take a look at that film. Several hours before Donna hit with her full force, Dempsey and Dale set up their sound camera at the Seven Mile Bridge at Marathon. The howling wind driving salt spray before it gave a hint of what was to come. Dick Dale summed up the situation this way. This is Dick Dale at the north end of the Seven Mile Bridge that you see in the background here. Uh, these winds uh, now have come from 40 miles an hour in gusts to a steady 70 or 75 miles an hour. It's taking everything, about everything I can do to stand here. Uh, the, the water you see on me isn't rain, it's a spray from behind the camera. Uh, the way the sea is running right now is almost a uh, certainty that uh, properties will be damaged in this area, and most people are moving to higher ground from whatever area they happen to occupy. The water here now is about four feet uh, heavy, higher than it was earlier this morning. Let's take a look at that. As you can see, the water here is running way high now. It's coming over this wall, and we're getting the uh, about the biggest aggravation we've had so far today. The storm has really found us, or <laughs> we found it, as Dempsey said. Uh, the sea, the sea running at this time is running toward the southern end of the keys here. It's coming in at an angle rather than flat against us, which is probably uh, a good thing at this point.
and everyone was kept busy unpacking, arranging, and distributing the necessities of life. As the night wore on, people began bedding down as best they could. Blankets were spread on the bare floor, and each family was allotted its own separate space. On the surface, the scene was calm. People read, talked, or just slept to while away the waiting hours. But in the back of every mind lurked the fear of what might come. It was the many children that in their own youthful way kept morale from flight. To them, this was just an exciting adventure. They were too young to know the fearful danger that had visited their home. Meanwhile, in other parts of Key West, emergency communication centers were set up to facilitate evacuation and to organize rescue operations. Telephone lines went down throughout the Keys area, cutting them off from the mainland. Mobile units, operated largely by volunteers, combed the community, assisting local police, the highway patrol, and transmitting weather information to weather stations. At the Key West weather station, radar penetrated the murky skies, picking up these dramatic pictures of Hurricane Donna. As the storm drew nearer, radar screens on Key West picked up this perfect image of the hurricane. Notice in the right-hand portion of the screen, the storm's center eye. It was around the rim of that eye that highest winds occurred in the northeast quadrant, with gusts recorded as high as 166 miles per hour. Another note sent with the film report, this one from Dempsey, described the nightmare the two men had during the night when the storm hit. The note began with a short but loaded phrase, this whole thing has become unglued. They stayed at the Hurricane Motel, and a more appropriate name couldn't have been chosen. The 90 mile an hour wind started pushing water into the room. It wasn't long before it was pouring over the first six inches of the door. The winds increased to 130 miles an hour. The water kept coming. Jealousy windows began breaking, letting more water in. Dale and Dempsey moved their equipment and clothing to higher ground, but it was to prove a futile gesture. The waste basket began floating, and still the water came. Power went off. The phone lines were dead. The staff car outside was flooded, picked up. The automobile tossed 10 feet closer to the room. The water eventually rose to chest height in the room. Dale and Dempsey left to find other shelters. When they returned to the room, the sound camera was found under the refrigerator, waterlogged, packed with sand and ruins. The room was shambles, clothing strewn about, windows out, but at least the water had receded. Outside, the WTBJ staff car had its lettering blasted off by the force of the wind-driven sand. At the height of the storm, the car was completely underwater. Dempsey and Dale hitched rides to Key West to join forces with WTBJ newsmen Ed Godfrey and George Peraldo. By this time, communications between the mainland and the Keys had been cut off. Roads were washed out in many places, and air travel was not possible. The four men then set out again for a marathon. With Peraldo at the wheel, the car carefully picked its way along U.S. Highway 1. It was littered with debris of all types. Palm fronds, coconuts, trees, splintered telephone poles, and wires. Boats were strewn near the roadway, high and dry. Tiny vaca key, although sparsely settled, suffered severe damage. There were no reports of serious injuries. All day long on the drive, the winds picked up then died and then picked up again. The car was rocked from one side of the road to the other. The story was much the same. All along, the tiny string of islands stretched like a necklace for over 100 miles. Pigeon Key, Big Pine Key, Missouri Key, Tavernier Marathon, all told the same story. No communication, no water supply, roads washing out, but perhaps most important, no panic. The weather-wise residents of the Keys had paid attention to the hurricane advisories and had stocked up on food and water. The Monroe County Sheriff's Department reported only two casualties of the hurricane. 
body of a man identified as Dwight Barnes at Plantation High House, Fort Lauderdale, was found on Tavernier. There was another unconfirmed report of a death in Marathon. Some old timers report winds whistled over the keys at speeds of over 150 miles an hour. One of the areas hardest hit by Hurricane Donna was Marathon Key. It was here that the eye of the storm hit, leaving that island about 90% destroyed. This is how it looked before WTVJ newsmen as they drove through Marathon. The wind whipped through the island with demonic fury, twisting, crumbling, and destroying nearly everything in its path. A few boats were thrown up on the shore, landing in the streets and even on the tops of houses. Two housing developments west of Marathon Airport were completely whipped up. Roofs were ripped from their foundations, and cement block walls reduced to piles of rubble. Bridges are down and the whole area badly flooded. Residents, some of them, the few remaining, wandered around today in a daze, sifting through the remains of what used to be their homes and businesses. One man, a motel owner, predicted the storm would set Marathon back 20 years. Food and shelter are being provided on an emergency basis, and all public utilities have been marked out. Men from the highway patrol are patrolling the island today, trying to prevent looting. About 40 prisoners from the Monroe County Prison Farm were brought into Marathon early this evening to start clearing away the debris left by the storm. Four or 500 trailers were completely destroyed, leaving an uncounted number of people home. The picture tonight one of complete and utter destruction of Marathon. Damage is heavy in other sections along the Keys. In Tavernier, about 75 miles north of Marathon, much the same scene prevails. At Duck Key, the new and fancy Indies house has been left for shambles. The damage there estimated at about a million and a half dollars. The swimming pool is no more. One pilot flying over Flamingo in the northern, or rather the southern part of Everglades National Park reported the new motel there is wrecked. The marina has its roof completely blown off. A scene of devastation along the Keys not seen in many years. On many of the Keys, there is little land separating the Atlantic Ocean from the Gulf of Mexico. When Donna whipped the high tides over these Keys, the Atlantic and the Gulf became at once one body of water. It was miraculous more people were not killed. Nearly 400, you'll recall, lost their lives in the hurricane of 1935, most of them construction workers. But then there was no adequate advance warning system. Evacuation was not carried out. This time, the National Hurricane Warning Center at Miami provided a minute-by-minute -minute track of the storm. The weathermen knew what the hurricane was going to do almost before Donna knew it. Many homes have been washed away. On Craig Key, for example, buildings have just disappeared. It's not known if there were any persons in these buildings. Some of the wrecked structures have been inaccessible up to now. The fate of all those who remain behind will be known as rescue workers comb through all the debris. Miraculously, then, no serious injuries have been reported. The death count is extremely low, considering the magnitude of the property damage in the Keys, which will run way up into the millions. What happened in the Keys proves the value of heeding the advice of the Weather Bureau and the other authorities when it comes to evacuating. When they say get out, they know what they're talking about. Pictures on this program tonight were flown to Miami on one of the first planes to depart from Marathon after the storm. It is impossible to drive to Marathon because several bridges have been washed out. Here's one at Tavernier, and the overseas pipeline to Key West has been broken in several places, and the Keys, including Key West, will be without water from a period of a week and a half until two weeks. The main structure of this bridge held firm, as you can see, but the approach was destroyed by winds and water. The Florida Highway Patrol has a roadblock up at Florida City and is prohibiting any traffic southward to the Keys at this time. Most of the residents of the Central Keys area uh, did evacuate. In our studio tonight, we have with us some residents of Marathon, where that devastation occurred, and those pictures you saw a moment ago were taken. We also have with us one gentleman who rode out the storm in Marathon, operating an amateur radio station uh, in that city. I'd like to introduce uh, that gentleman to you first of all, Mr. Tony Polis of Tavernier. 
He's a ham radio operator, station K4ENN, and assistant chairman of radio communications of the American Red Cross Disaster Committee at Tavernier. Uh, Tony, uh, what was your estimate of the winds at the height of the storm? We estimated uh, between uh, 160 and uh, 170 miles per hour. I believe you were the one who radioed the first reports uh, of the disaster from down in the Keys. Uh, can you give us just a, a brief rundown of your eyewitness report on what happened at Tavernier? Well, we couldn't see very much. Uh, we got down, we arrived about approximately uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We set up the radio station, installed the antenna. We assigned me our first contact with Miami. We were in uh, <clears throat> uh, constant communication with Miami until approximately uh, 10 o'clock at night. And uh, then the band changed, the skip came in, and uh, we uh, relayed to a station in Virginia. We had a station in Virginia that uh, heard us, and they uh, uh, relayed it back to, uh, to Miami, to Red Cross headquarters. There was one report that came out during the evening which indicated that there might have been several casualties down in Tavernier. Was that the initial information you had? Uh, that's true at, at first. We thought there were because several of the uh, our families uh, refused to uh, leave the buildings, leave the houses, and go to the shelter. And uh, our first observation, we uh, saw that the houses were completely demolished after the uh, storm struck. And... Uh, we were under the impression they were still in the house, but uh, evidently they did move before the uh, house was demolished. That seems to be one of the remarkable things about this storm is the destruction and devastation of most of the buildings down there, and yet there were hundreds of people who remained behind. Where did they stay and yet uh, escape harm? We had two shelters in the area. One was a, uh, a large uh, cement building, 75 tons of uh, iron in it, I think, uh, a foot and a half uh, reinforced uh, concrete walls. We had 70, uh, 87 people in that building. We had uh, uh, about approximately 75 in another warehouse uh, further down the uh, down the road. What was the scene that uh, sun up today in Marathon, or when the wind and rain subsided, and you had a chance to, I mean, a tavern area to look around? It was very bad. We uh, uh, surveyed uh, at the first uh, sign of daylight. We found uh, one trailer park completely demolished. Uh, trailers were scattered over a wide area. Uh, uh, the wooden one had splintered, and the uh, furniture was in the road, in the, in the fields, in the road. And, uh, some of them were on top of each other. We went to another area, and there were approximately uh, six houses, and each one had been moved off the foundations from uh, 50 to 75 feet. Two of them had rolled over and were upside down, and two were on their sides. There was one other area, a small area, further to the south, was completely untouched. Is the highway from Tavernier northward to Miami passable? Uh, passable with difficulty. Uh, there were several obstructions. A uh, uh, roof of one building was in the middle of the road. A little further on, there was a 40-foot boat crossways in the road. There were several refrigerators, uh, washing machines, various articles of furniture in the road that we had to uh, detour to go around. Some of the more interested people in what happened down in the Keys were a group of residents who evacuated the area, came to Miami, and uh, stayed in a hotel here and just uh, sat and waited and uh, feared the worst but hoped for the best. Uh, Del Frank uh, will introduce uh, the marathon residents. Well, Ralph, we talked to them immediately before the program. And one of those uh, uh, we talked to was the daughter of the chairman of the Civil Defense at Marathon, Miss Gail Trandell, in the studio. Hello, Gail. Hello. Uh, we talked to you earlier about your conversation with your dad about uh, 11 o'clock this evening. About an hour ago, you talked to him. What did he say about the scene, the picture there in Marathon? Uh, this afternoon when everybody had a chance to get out and evaluate the damage? Uh, well, <clears throat> he said that uh, the uh, property on the Gulf side uh, was damaged very badly. 
he said that the place across the street from us, which was on the Gulf, was, there was nothing left but a shell there. It was a motel and a yacht basin. And uh, Hanley's across the street from us had around $30,000 worth of damage just on the back side of it. And uh, Hall's Camp, just a little ways across from us, lost six uh, uh, units there, motel units, and uh, three trailers were in there. The people that lived there were turned over and damaged pretty badly. Uh, Park and Lodge was supposed to have gone, vanished. Fred Center's uh, uh, boat rental there, the house, his house com completely disappeared. And uh, overseas boat rental, closer to the Seven Mile Bridge, um, disappeared. They didn't know what happened to it. Well, Gail, were there any reports from your dad tonight on the phone about casualties in that area? Uh, no, he didn't say anything about casualties. Were there any people missing? No, not as far as he knew. Well, thank you, Gail. Uh, two gentlemen are also with us who are partners in a business down in Marathon, Garber's Motel and Yacht Basin, are George Garber and Russ Purcell. Uh, Mr. Garber and uh, Mr. Purcell, uh, let me ask you this, Mr. Garber, first of all, how long have you been down the Keys? Two years ago, the 1st of September. How about you, Mr. Purcell? It came the 1st of September of last year. Well, I don't suppose you fellows can be considered real conks, then. Uh, no, that's for sure. <laughs> let me know that, that time. What type of uh, facility did you have there, and, and uh, how did it fare in the storm? We had 24 motel units that we thought was supposed to be here to improve, but evidently weren't. We had a trailer park and a yacht basin. And by the looks of the pictures, it doesn't look like we have much left plus our rental boats and our charter boats. Is this the first opportunity you had had to see any uh, photographs of the damage down there, Marathon? We saw <clears throat> some pictures this afternoon that weren't too clear, but uh, this gives us... Um, the one picture was our office that we had just built at the motel and showed the new tile that we had just laid on the floor. Is that so? That's right. On the program tonight? That's right. That didn't make you very happy, Not of course. Happy. Uh, have you had any opportunity to talk to people down in Marathon? No, we're flying down tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. One of the gentlemen uh, also of Marathon is with us uh, tonight. Uh, yes, well, that's Mr. Uh, L.Y. Lee Thomas, who also operates the marina and yacht basin, and who had uh, taken in this afternoon, or rather yesterday afternoon, some boats from Mr. Garver and Mr. Purcell for safe keeping. Uh, Mr. Thomas, would you mind telling us uh, what you think has happened to those boats you took into storage and the boats you had in your own basin? According to the picture I saw there, it looks like uh, uh, there may not be any boats down there. Uh, one picture looked like it was uh, the Thomas Marine Incorporated, and it was still standing. It, looked, uh, it showed heavy rain there. Mm -hmm. I could uh, see some pictures of boats there, but uh, whether those boats are on the side or in front of the place, it looked like they're in front instead of the side where they're supposed to be. We had, uh, oh, 20 or 25 boats down there, and... Uh, uh, of course, I don't know what happened to those boats. <coughs> and, um, another thing of interest there is that the Catholic school and the Catholic church, uh, homes over there that the non-Jews have all uh, disappeared. I understand uh, that uh, Key County Beach has taken a terrific beating and possibly uh, has been completely destroyed, too. The northeast corner of um, or end of uh, Vanca Key uh, most of the homes there have been destroyed, too. They're all uh, cement block construction home, too. And uh, what else there is down there? Well, this is very bad. This is the worst uh, catastrophe uh, dollar-wise in the history of the Keys. Much of the buildup uh, in the Keys has come uh, in the last 10 years, for example, hasn't it, gentlemen? Uh, and there hasn't been a storm that has struck that area in that uh, length of time. Has this always uh, been a matter of apprehension for newcomers coming down there, as you have, uh, Mr. Garber, going into business there. Uh, were you overly concerned about uh, hurricanes or possible damage to your place? Not to the extent of what this was. 
How about the insurance factor of millions of dollars in damage? Is this covered? The insurance companies are... Very low. Give you very little coverage. Very low. So most of this loss you have to bear yourself. That's right. One gentleman was quoted today as saying he felt that this would set Marathon back 20 years. What do you think, Mr. Thomas? I don't think so. I think that on um, a couple of years, the most, that Marathon will be built back up again, uh, uh, possibly in a better uh, town than it was before. After all, it is a, a very nice place. I've been going down there for a number of years. I started this business six years ago that I'm in now. And uh, I've watched uh, Marathon progress all along. And I believe that Marathon is going to come right back again just the way, way it was before, only much better. Mr. Thomas, uh, how about you personally? Do you think you'll be able to become a part of this new growth you were talking about? Will you be able to stand your losses? I'll be able to stand my losses, I think, and come back all right, yes. It may take some time, but you'll do it. Oh, yes. Uh, actually, I plan now on making a much better place than what I had before. And uh, I'm going to make it stronger, too. <laughs> well, if everyone takes uh, learns their lesson from Hurricane Donna of 1960, I imagine that Hurricane of 1970 will not create the damage, the confusion, the turmoil, the devastation that this one did in this year of 1960. Thank you all very much. That's the spirit, Darrell, that's going to bring Marathon back. As you folks know, the people of uh, southeast Florida and your neighbors up in the Keys here are entirely behind you in this effort and want to assist you in every way possible. But I think a 20-year figure we can forget about. It's just a matter of how fast the job can be done now. And how much faith people have in the job they want to do. This has been a special report on the damage in the Florida Keys caused by Hurricane Donna. Some late information on the hurricane right at the moment that's boring inland through Florida this morning through the rich citrus country, the hurricane hit the west coast cities of Naples, Fort Myers, and Sarasota. The storm's about 350 miles wide, and it's expected to do some of its heaviest damage as it cuts through the rural communities. Wachula, Florida, for example, is said to have been hard hit. All communications and access to Wachula uh, are down at the moment, but scattered reports indicate Wachula have been hard hit. Fort Myers had winds of 121 miles an hour. There was one fatality in Fort Myers. Sarasota was left in partial darkness. The winds there reached 84 miles an hour. Heavy rains pose a threat to the central part of the state. And, of course, the citrus industry tonight is uh, fearing the, the worst with that storm going through there at this time of year, just when the crop is reaching maturity. The Eye of Donna, according to a late report, passed through Polk County uh, between 11 and 11.30 tonight on a line running from Lake Wales to Mulberry, Florida. Hurricane warnings are now displayed on the west coast from Cedar Key southward, on the Atlantic coast from Savannah, Georgia to Palm Beach. Highest gusts in the hurricane are now estimated at 110 miles an hour as it crosses the mainland. One local note, the City of Miami Water Department tonight reports that there is no report on contamination of water in the City of Miami Water Department. Chemists have checked the water supply. Sheriff John Spotswood of Monroe County has estimated damage to the Keys from today's storm at from 600 to 700 million dollars. That's our report. Good night. WTVJ News has presented a special report on the destruction caused by Hurricane Donna, ordeal in the Keys.